So far in our labs, our routers have only had one source of information telling them about a non-connected route. It may have been a static route, it may have been a rip route, but there was no choice that had to be made. But in some cases, especially in production networks, a router may hear about a given route from multiple sources. And the router's got to make a decision as to which route to place into its IP routing table and which protocol is going to be used to handle traffic for that destination. Here's an example. Here's a router getting an update for 172.12.123.0, both from EIGRP and REP. And I know that we haven't gotten to EIGRP yet. You don't have to know the ins and outs of EIGRP to understand what we're going to talk about here. Now, you see the one difference here is that the EIGRP subnet mask is one bit longer than the update that's coming in from REP. And there's nothing wrong with a router running multiple routing protocols, by the way. You'll see that in production networks, certainly. So this router is running EIGRP, it's running RIP, it's hearing about the 172.12.123.0 network. Which route is it going to put into its IP routing table? Well, in this case, administrative distance does not matter because the first value that's considered in this route choice is the length of the subnet mask. And in that previous illustration, the EIGRP route had a mask of 25 or slash 25, while the RIP route has a mask of slash 24. And this is what we call the longest match. That EIGRP mask is going to match the first 25 bits. RIP is matching 24, so EIGRP is considered the longest match. And the EIGRP route would be put into the IP routing table doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the RIP route, it's just that EIGRP route is considered superior. If that EIGRP route was lost and then that RIP route was the only one coming in for that network, then of course the RIP route would be used. So if admin distance didn't come into play there, when will it come into play? Well, there's just a one bit difference between this diagram and the last. But that one bit does make all the difference because now the router's hearing about 172.12.123.0 slash 24 from two different protocols. It's hearing about it from EIGRP and it's hearing about it from RIP. So which route is it going to put into its IP routing table? This is when administrative distance comes into play. Again, remember the longest match is the first of first thing that the router is going to check. Administrative distance is strictly a tiebreaker. That's all it is. And here we have a tie. We've got a couple of 24-bit masks for the exact same network. And now administrative distance is going to be used to decide which route to choose and then, of course, which protocol is going to be used. Administrative distance really, it's a question of believability. And that's just like if two people told you what the weather was going to be today. You know, you get dressed at 6 in the morning, one weather person says, hey, it's going to be sunny and 80, and the other person says, hey, it's going to snow. Now, one of those weather people is really, really wrong, but you still got to make a choice. And it comes down to believability. And that's exactly what this is. The router has to decide who's more believable, EIGRP or RIP, and that's where admin distance comes in. Now we saw one admin distance in particular uh, quite often in the last couple of videos, and that was RIP's AD of 120. You can always find the administrative distance of a route inside the brackets in the IP routing table. You'll have two numbers there. The first one's the AD, and the second one is that route's metric. And the RIP routes on R1 from our previous lab, I'm going to show that to you in a moment, they all had an AD of 120, which is the default AD. Uh, just a quick review here, too, of the whole thing here as far as the entry, these uh, IP routing table entries. The R, of course, stands for RIP. Then we have our subnets. And then in the brackets, 120 and then slash 1, the 120 is the AD, the 1 is the metric. And those metrics will get a little bit bigger when you get up to EIGRP and OSPF. But for RIP, a metric of 1 is certainly understandable. We know that's a hop count. It's going to say via, and that IP address it shows is the next hop IP address. The timer that we see is the amount of time since the last time we heard an update about this particular route. And we know with RIP, that's never going to be over half a minute by default. With OSPF and EIGRP, as you'll see, it'll be much longer because we don't have those uh, twice a minute updates. And then the local router's exit interface to reach that destination is going to be at the end of that line. Now, as far as all these other ADs go, 
I'm going to show those to you in a minute, but it occurs to me that I didn't tell you, well, how does it choose, you know, which one is the best AD, the higher one or the lower one? Well, the lowest AD is considered the best AD. The lower the administrative distance, the more believable the source of the route. So in this case, the router is going to choose that EIGRP route over RIP in the tiebreaker. And I'm going to show you an entire table of ADs here in just a moment. And there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with EIGRP. They're all good ADs to know for your exam prep. Now, this is one of those things. I've, it's a little awkward to show you an entire table of ADs when you haven't seen a lot of these protocols in action yet. It's just one of these things. We need you to see these numbers now. I would memorize these, frankly. Uh, you'll see a couple of them in your CCNA studies, a couple more of them. Uh, some you won't see until further studies, but I think it's a good idea for you to know all of these numbers. Now the connected routes, that's the only route type that will not have the brackets I mentioned. And what you'll see there is just nothing. And a connected route is considered to have an administrative distance of zero. Now static routes are considered to have an AD of one. And this is, uh, I don't want to say off the record because I am talking directly into a microphone, but uh, off the exam record, you'll see discussions online occasionally about whether a static route has an AD of one or zero, depending on whether you use the exit interface or the next top IP address when you're writing it. Um, leave that alone. Cisco's word on their documents, everything else they have, their static route is one, and that's what we're going with. So don't outthink yourself there. You're going to be introduced to three different EIGRP routes when you get to that protocol. And the one that we saw here, the regular EIGRP route, so to speak, an internal route has an administrative distance of 90. Uh, the EIGRP summary route, as you see, has an AD of 5. OSPF 110, IS to IS 115, and that's more of a service provider protocol. Unless you study for those exams specifically, you may never, you may never even configure IS to IS, but there's plenty of it out there. You should know that its AD is 115. For RIP, both versions of RIP have an AD of 120. EIGRP external routes have an AD of 170. That is a route learned via route redistribution. I'm just telling you that. If it doesn't ring a bell with you yet, fine, it will. Uh, BGP internal routes, you're going to get some BGP here in your CCNA studies, and that has an AD of 200. And if a route has an AD of 255, it is considered to be of unknown source, and it is untrusted. Now, you're not going to see an AD of 255 on a route in your routing table because if it's untrusted, it ain't going in your routing table. But that's a great number to keep in mind, 255 if the route is totally and absolutely untrusted. That's really it for administrative distance. Again, it's strictly a tiebreaker in that route choice. It's going to look at the longest match first, but when it comes down to the AD, it's going to compare the administrative distance of the sources. Could be more than two. You never know. It could be three. And again, this is a good start as far as memorizing the ADs, the ones you'll bump into in your CCNA studies and in your NP should you go there as well. That's it for administrative distance for now. I have a feeling we're going to see it again a couple of videos from now. But coming up next, we're going to see equal cost load sharing in action with RIP and also introduce you to the traceroute command. And that's coming up next.